So I've heard from many different school officials that zero tolerance policies, that's the only way. So mm -hmm. what would you propose as maybe an alternative to that? You know, I think what you see in middle class, upper middle class school districts is typically a different approach. Mm -hmm. It's an approach designed to support young people. It's, a, it's, a, it's an approach um, that's organized around intervention. How do we intervene in this child's life mm -hmm. um, to ensure that, you know, he gets the help and support that he needs and, you know, without ignoring the real needs of the other children in the classroom mm -hmm. um, who deserve a quality education as well. Um, and so when a kid is struggling, you know, dealing dope or having, you know, experimenting with drugs or maybe even having a problem with addiction or abuse, the first response isn't to throw the kid out of school. The first response is, well, how do we get this kid treatment? How do we get this kid help? Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I think in poor schools, the assumption is, well, of course these kids are doing this. Um, Forgetting, of course, that they're doing the same kinds of things in mm -hmm. wealthier schools, that kids in wealthier schools shoplift, they steal, they experiment with drugs and sell them. Um, kids make mistakes and, you know, struggle and find their way. Um, and we have such a different approach, I think, when it's for kids, particularly young black males. Um, it, our first instinct is punitiveness rather than compassion. Um, and I think, you know, school discipline should start from a premise that every child, every child deserves support, care and concern, and the kinds of interventions that will ensure they succeed as well as their classmates um, rather than interventions that are designed to simply punish and discard. When you speak of talking about how the profit motive has sort of creeped in and then we also have the initiative of the get tough rhetoric moving in, how could we say that that get tough rhetoric has passed down into the school systems as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well I think, you know, the get tough mentality, um, you know, which clearly manifest itself in the war on drugs and also manifest itself in the wave of mandatory minimum sentences and three strikes laws and all the rest which helped to quintuple our prison population um, in the space of just three short decades. That mentality has showed up, you know, in our schools um, through the zero tolerance type policies that we see, um, but also in the general attitude um, towards young kids of color. Um, the idea that we just need to be tough on them so that they'll act right, right? <laughs> um, but you know, it's just so interesting that we don't have that same attitude to our young white kids. You know, I think there's an understanding that, you know, more privileged kids, they need nurturing, mm -hmm. they need support, they need to be inspired, um, they need to be introduced to a range of opportunities um, to kind of broaden their horizons, um, but in poor kids of color, the idea is, well, let's scrap the arts programs, let's strip music, you know, we don't need athletics, we'll just stick to the basics and we're going to get really tough. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's tragic. Um, if we genuinely care about poor kids of color as much as we care about their more privileged counterparts on the other side of town, our approach to education would be radically different, and certainly our approach to crime and punishment would be radically different. Um, you know, really this caste-like system that's been created is a school-to-prison pipeline. Wow. Um, one that really ensures that from cradle to grave, some of us, some of us, um, will never get the chances that others take for granted. Well, the new Jim Crow is not explicitly race-based, 
Um, on the surface, it seems to be colorblind, um, but this new Jim Crow operates nearly as effectively as the old one did. It shuttles poor kids of color from their decrepit underfunded schools to brand new high-tech prisons. Um, it operates through the war on drugs and our system of mass incarceration. Kids are targeted at young ages, stopped, frisked, searched by the police, um, arrested at dramatically higher rates for drug offenses, even though they're no more likely to use or sell illegal drugs than whites. And how do you see that mindset sort of trickling down into the school system, like the public school system? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it does in subtle ways and not so subtle ways. You know, when I look at kind of zero tolerance policies that have been embraced in school districts around the country, you know, the language, the zero tolerance language actually came from the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, was the first to use the term zero tolerance, and it was part of the drug war rhetoric, um, of having zero tolerance for drugs. And, you know, that rhetoric of zero tolerance was born in a war, a drug war aimed at poor folks of color, and then it shows up <laughs> in these school discipline manuals and becomes kind of the standard lingo um, for school discipline. And it all is traceable to this war-like mentality of there's some folks who are disposable that we have no tolerance for. There's no second chances, no third chances. So how do you see your book being useful for people of all ages in order to bring that consciousness and awareness that we spoke about earlier? Yeah, I'm really excited about how the book's being used as a tool um, in schools, um, both at the college and you know university level, but also in high schools. being willing to advocate um, for the repeal of harsh mandatory minimum sentences and three strikes laws and being willing to dismantle zero tolerance policies in schools and um, being willing um, to oppose discrimination against people released from prison and employment and housing and access to education and public benefits. We've actually got to be willing to get to work and um, I hope that this conference is a reflection um, of the collective willingness um, of many in the community to actually begin that work.